This week on the Push Ball Lakes podcast, have coaches got the wrong end of the stick with Stephen Bartlett? And why Dan won't sign up on Patreon? And three, two, one. Old man knees is here. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Ball Lakes podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bro? Yeah, my knee's fine. It's getting there. Don't worry. Be back. Be able to whoop you at golf in January when you come over. Don't you worry. Mm. Don't you worry, mate. Mm. Fine you won't be able to handle handle the talk, Dan. That's the oh, chat and you. and the uh, talk of pressure going through your knee as you rotate and it does this. <clears throat> it's in my right knee. It's fine. My right knee. Fine. <laughs> right knee needs, needs a lot less working golf for right knee, so I'm okay. Don't, don't need right that one. Do it. Just need internal rotation of your hip, don't you? That's it. We need. But yeah, you're good. All good. All good. How are your knees after your fucking travel on anyway? Oh yeah, I did a travel did I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I realized we were uh, we obviously didn't talk about it last week, even though I did it over ten days ago. But because yeah. we were so prepared, um, or the fact Once. that we forgot that like I was gonna be away for a week <laughs> and then we delayed delayed the summer break. It was quite nice having a little summer break. Um of yeah. not talking to you. It was quite well, we actually saw each other, so it was slightly annoying. So but yeah, exactly. yeah life life been happening. Um so we should instead of aiming for fifty plus episodes, I think we should always aim for about forty a year. Look at that, forty free content. Please. Yeah. Please. I think it's the summer that I said there's a few coaches there were sort of like <laughs> what was that? worrying about <laughs> I just coughed a little bit. <clears throat> Oh, um, a few coaches were saying that um, obviously July and August is a little bit quieter and I was just like well yeah think about it I was like I've wanted a quiet summer like most people want a yeah, quiet yeah. summer like, most people just like they take the time to just enjoy it it's like it's normal um, and it's it's weird because Isabel went back to school yesterday and for me it just felt straight like straight back to going back to normal I was like okay sweet back to normal in a routine I know where I'm at I know Monday to Friday what I'm doing all that, all those things whereas over the summer it can feel a bit like what's going on is anyone bothered does anyone care you know all that sort of stuff Funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what's quite interesting. Yeah, it's like this is the last week. I think until the kid, I think the kids go back next week. So yeah, next here. week in the UK now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this one's a really weird one. So I'd like, I'd like six sessions yesterday, like six one to ones yesterday, five today, mm-hmm. and that's all I like doing. That's my whole week's work. Um, and then, <laughs> then it kind of tickles off throughout the, the end of the week. So. Which is extremely interesting. Oh, that's going to be fun. We'll review it next week, um, which will be interesting. I'll also get uh, Nathan's view. I'm having something called a Neko body scan. Ooh. I know. I don't really know. I'll I'll put it up now. Um, people, go- do some Googling. Um, Neko body scan. Basically, uh, I've been given it for free. Um, I don't know how much it's worth anyway. But it's by the lads who uh, I think created Spotify. So I hope I get like some music. But it's pretty funky looking, mate. Like, yeah, yeah it's pretty weird. This obviously as part of me being, I'm just an influencer. They just want me to do stories around. Oh, I'm just, mate. I'm just staying I've got alive. To do it. Got to do it. Like, what's like inside it, all that. It's it's a weird one. So they like check all of like your scars and your birthmarks and moles and mm-hmm. stuff. And then, like a little doctor's consultation, they take your blood. They do heart and arterial tree with a scan. Not too sure how that happens. Um, instant blood results, including hemoglobin, high sensitivity to CRP, cholesterol, LDL, long-term blood sugar, all that. So I'll be like, I'll be like, kind of what can. Also, they're doing it at a very good time. That the fact I've been training for this triathlon, so I'm probably as healthy yeah. as I've ever been. <laughs> Say, yeah. <laughs> definitely Nothing. think you should eat 12 steaks the three days before do you think and like yeah else. i'll be like i'll be like i've actually been doing i've started my carb loading so i'm in a depletion state right now yeah. so yeah that'll be bad so but i've got that on friday so that'd be interesting i will discuss um all my neko body scan if you want to go google that um yeah be interesting i don't really know what it's about it's an hour um We'll see slightly off topic, but I remember seeing um no, it's it's slightly off topic, yeah. Um all the coaches slagging off um Stephen Bartlett, and you see that advert the literally advert. written that down to talk about, Daniel. God, Sweet, it's like right. just, just shut up about it. Oof, oof, oof. Shut up about it. We're either the same it. same mind or uh yeah. Or I, I like put it on my story the other week and then I was just like, you know what, we're gonna talk about this because it fucking wound yeah. me up. 
Yeah, right. it wound me up. It wound, wound me up. up. Well. No, it wound me up not for the Bartlett thing. It wound me up the amount of fucking coaches who don't read. Yeah, and like that's to mate, read the, the exact, fucking the exact same thing. Do, do you know why? Because they're all going. Oh, finally, he's he's you know this stuff's called out for being not proven. I was like, no, 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 no. that's not what it was. No, no, that's not why. That's not why. That's, that's nothing to do with it. In fact, like you all yeah. just and I nearly posted it on my Woo! story, but I was like, my, oh, for my God. camera, camera just, my camera, um, is, oh, my car, someone's throwing me on the floor. Um, <laughs> I got so annoyed at it because the amount of coaches that were just jumped in on about time this guy's nutrition advice got you know got called up or got you know shouted or whatever they were fucking saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my god! But I didn't post it on my stories because I was just like, oh, you know what? I don't care enough anymore. Like no one, you know, it's it's not in my realm anymore, kind of thing. Yeah. But um, that that was gonna be my thing of like coaches would do far better with the business if they only read because they all they've done is jump to conclusions, fucking reshare it. And I was like, Ugh. again, if you're doing that with your fucking business, Jesus Christ! Like it's it was baffling to see the amount of people share it without fucking reading man i know because like oh my god if, if you painful. if you totally missed it obviously stephen bartlett is big on what is he huel and it was huel and zoe because they're zoe, the two nutrition right? related things and like basically and... the advert the, the headline was the headline was um stephen bartlett's adverts for zoe and huel filed for being misleading yeah that was the headline and everyone yeah. just went, that? screenshotted it, reposted it. About time people, oh my God. And then obviously Tom's going to go through and go, we're going to go deep into like what it was actually said. And like, <laughs> again, it's, just a, it's just this prime example of coaches, again, just like reading what they want to read and like just just running with it. And not it actually, literally. and and it comes back to, again, I'm going to go down this lesson route of like, and coaches wonder why they can't get clients. I'm like, because you're not reading the room. You're not listening. You're just assuming all the time what people want. All, and, and this was a prime example of that, of just read a headline, fucking post about it. Don't care about the nuance. Don't care about what people need to hear or want to hear. It was painful to watch. It, it was, it was, wasn't it? And it was, but it was the amount of like actual, purposely like really like well made content as well. Like they've done like a little like green screen stuff, like I do sometimes of like, and then they've properly sat down and like almost like mini scripted it all. But you haven't bothered checking the source <laughs> for like, you've yeah. Done, you spent, like, it, but it's also the same thing that they have a go at other people for not checking. Yeah. Like, where's your source? Where's the evidence? Where's the research? Have you actually read the research? And I'm sat there going, you don't help yourselves because you you just and it was probably in like because I read the article. I think it was in about the third paragraph. I didn't even read that much of it. It wasn't even like it was buried in it. It was literally like within the first few paragraphs. It was in the introduction bit. But basically, the reason that it was misleading was because it was advertised in a way where they didn't know that he was an investor in it. Yeah, so that, that was it. he was basically promoting his own products. that He uses them and he, he was like, I use Zoe all the time. It's great. And the misleading bit was the fact that he's an investor in it. That that was that was why it was misleading compared to you know Facebook ads. Yeah. And that's why they shut, shut them down. Um, and the same with the, the Huel. I drink Huel, I really like it. Okay, but you need to tell people you're investing in it. That was it. it. That was the misleading nature of it. Yeah, it's literally oh, just... But did a single PT right. mention that? No. no. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on it as well. How weird is that that we both had the so, same fucking view? I was, I was like, oh my so God, annoyed because I just saw so much of it. Like, yeah. obviously I follow a lot of coaches, right? Obviously demographic-wise, I work with a lot of coaches, same as you. And it was just like, don't quite understand what i'm like seeing and i was like and i was like am i wrong have i i I double checked myself like have i read the article incorrectly and i was like i get that like zoe is misleading or whatever all this kind of stuff it's fine but i was like no i tell you what mate it's on the third third yeah literally i say third paragraph third line bbc yeah right (laughs) bbc news stephen bar the nutrition adverts banned for being misleading people went copy paste put it out there right yeah Adverts for nutrition products promoted by a diary receipt and podcast Steve Bartlett has been banned after Watchdog said they were misleading. The business, businessman who also who's also one of Dragons on the Dragons Den promoted products for Huel and Zoe without making clear he has a business interest in both companies. The Advertising Standards Authority said the ads seen on Facebook in February could be mistaken for an independent review and therefore misled customers. Yes. That was it. That, that was it. That's why they got taken down. Not because, yeah, they're a heap of the shit. The ASA says All it right. received two complaints that it wasn't clear from the advert that he had a commercial interest in the company. I mean, well, he obviously does because it, why? You know, but everyone fucking knows it. Yeah. But there's nothing in it about the 
fat loss, energy, oh, dieting. Not. not a single word like that at all in this BBC article. And by the way, it's a BBC article, and it is probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sixteen lines long. You couldn't even <laughs> read sixteen lines to get the actual story. Yeah. Baffling. Absolutely baffling when I saw that. Yeah. yeah, annoying. And some of you listening may have done that and you feel a bit sheepish now, right? Okay, cool. Like maybe you do, right? Maybe that's it, right? Just learn from it. That's all I'm gonna say. Just learn from yeah. it. Yeah, just it's fine. Because just... if Stephen Bartlett had done the opposite, you'd have been fucking all over him. <laughs> he's not going to post a story being like I can't believe that PT said about me and he didn't even know the facts he's not going to bother he doesn't care he doesn't give a shit yeah. um, just be just think again just think before you post just read 16 lines is all you needed to read <laughs> so something sounded like that like I kind of get I kind of get getting like a source wrong for like, oh, my biomechanics knowledge isn't exactly what this person said or because you've been like, oh, I've watched Joel Seedman, therefore I'm going to talk about isometrics and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, cool. That's opinion against some sort of science. And this is just, this is just plain wrong. It was just like, yeah. it was just like the, the answer was beneath your eyes. And it was just like, oh, no, okay. We're not going to bother. No, all right, that's fine. But, but also as well, um, yeah. like also the same people though that I see talk all the time and say things like, "Oh, the headline on BBC News said this about dieting, but actually the real story is this, this, and this." And it's almost like they didn't want to read it. It was almost like they, they was already guilty. Do you know what I mean? Like they didn't want to yeah. read it. It's it's just oh, it's just fucking intelligence to a certain degree. But it's just like. That's that's what winds me. That's what winds me about it. Is that it's the same coaches who would bash someone else for doing the same thing. Yeah, that's what I get a bit funny about. I'm like, really? Like, really? I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm about. It. There you go. Oh well. Oh well. <sighs> yeah. It's mm. done now. But just learn from it. Just learn from it because it's important to read. Yeah, but anyway, Dan, I got obsessed with um, somebody called Ren. You see that? I posted about it. I got so many messages about when I was like posting. I was just like absolutely obsessed. I don't know whether it's your kind of music, to be fair. It was like, it's British rap of sorts. Um, really good. It's very moving. You should go listen. You Ren should go as R E N. R E N. You should go listen to Hi Ren and watch the YouTube video and then get back to me. And you can Hi, give the review. Ren. Give the review next week. Yeah, so nine minutes. That's a long one, isn't it? Nine it's minutes. Long one. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah so that's your. Uh, I'll leave your it up paused, and I'll watch it after we've uh... home. Home. That's your homework for next week. Uh, yeah, okay. high rent. If anybody hasn't listened to it, it's I'm I'm late to the party, but I got I must have got about 10, 20 fucking messages going. He's fucking so good. It's unbelievable. Yeah, wow. I, will, I, will I was like, oh, this is so cool. So uh, definitely listen. watch the YouTube guys. It's only got about thirty nine million views, but yeah. So mm. I think I think I haven't. I'm not the one that found him. I think he's been found before. But yeah. oh, you think? Oh no, I'll, 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 I'll credit you. I'll just say you found him. I'll just say I won't read any further into it. I'll just say there's, you found him. It's not him. like that. If you click on him, and then yeah. there's about a billion like no, no, uh, no, no. reaction no. videos of it as well. Like, no, I'll just say you found him, mate. Because I don't need to read any further on than that. I just read the headline. You True. found yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, so I found fine. him. Just yeah, he was just down roads. He was in Warwick Avenue. Yeah. Like busking. that's what I heard. That's what I heard. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. That's what I'm gonna post on on Instagram. I'm gonna say that, mate. Don't worry about it. Um. I don't never understand on Zoom when the bubbles come up. It's supposed to be thumbs up and thumbs down, but whenever I actually do an actual thumb, it never works. Yeah, it's I know. Like, kind of like, like randomly point at something. And, you know, <laughs> just goes. Um, on the Google, I tell you, a Google one like does uh, crazy stuff. Why have I frozen as well? What is going on today? You're frozen, but oh, mate, your phone's having a nightmare, isn't it? Um, I know. Might have to switch. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. Switch back. Oh no, he's not. He's gone back. He's who knows where he is now? He's gone. <laughs> he's still hear me. There we go. Am I still talking? Must have been recorded. Who knows? Um, other thing as well, random thing go. I was going to say, completely, completely random thing, is that I put out um, an email the other day and I got some good feedback off it. It was kind of like, I think coaches need to need to look at how they use social media and how they use things 
more often to figure out what content they should be posting more of or less of. I think it's really important thing where it's like, if you want more people who are like you, figure out, again, I'm talking like whether you watch long form content, short form, because I get questions all the time from people around like, should I do a podcast? Should I do um, a YouTube or like what Instagram content should I be making more of or less of? And I'm kind of like, it kind of depends on what you like to do. Because I've obviously certainly recently been watching a lot more YouTube videos. Um, also like we talked about Chatterbix as a podcast, right? And I just noticed some really interesting behavior around me listening to this podcast and, and, and getting into this side of stuff and things like that. And in terms of, oh, I think everyone goes through phases where they kind of like people and the people like for me, a podcast becomes part of your week in a routine. Like I know they release on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I know that it's part of my routine that I listen to, to these things. Anyway, yeah. an interesting chat with one of my clients today, because I was talking to her about potentially using like the Instagram subscribe thing. Like I know you can get like a paid section on Instagram. And I know that on YouTube, you can get like a paid section on subscribe as well on groups. Mm. I was listening to Chatterbix, funnily enough. And they did an episode and they were like, oh, part one. And they did part one. And they said, oh, part two is going to be on Patreon. Yeah. Now, I, I had to think about this. I thought about it from a, from a marketing and from an Instagram and, and from my job point of view. It's five pound, three pound a month to do the Patreon. I've still not joined it. Yeah. And my main thing with it is because I don't use Patreon as an app. It's it's mad. But I was like, the I nearly did it the other day. I nearly went on it. I looked at it and I saw it was three pounds. It was all done through the Patreon app. I don't want to download the Patreon app. This is it's it's mental that that was my stumbling block. But I was kind of like, well, I get enough from them anyway. I get three a week. What's five? I don't really need five. You know, if it was like an upgradable thing on podcasts, I'd have done yeah, it. Yeah, if it went boom. Straight I'd in. have done yeah. it if it was yeah and I was like it's wild and it is not me like I had to sit back and go so because with my client she was talking about doing like a five pound a month almost like community thing and all this sort of stuff and like maybe hosting it on a different platform and I was like no you're big on Instagram subscribe on Instagram I get it I'm already on Instagram I get more of your stuff on there perfect I don't have to go anywhere else. And I said, it's, it's, I said, I said, trust me, this is weird. That's the reason I haven't joined their Patreon and paid them five pounds a month. Isn't it crazy? And I, and I, the more I sit back and think about it and about content, I think like we really need to think more like that. Why do I, why have I not joined that? Why do I do that? It's not about the money. It's not whether I can afford five pounds a month for the Patreon. Yeah. It's that I don't use Patreon. So I'm not going to bother. It's, I think you've got to like, Almost, yeah, exactly. Like, think of it like a kid, right? You're then, they're then a purchase, like in app purchases, they're then be like, boom, boom, boom. But they physically won't be able to go over to download the app. They'll lose attention span and be like, boom, mm -hmm. that's glitch. They wouldn't be able to do it. They'd be like, oh, I'm not going to bother. I'll just continue playing this shitty game and keep mm -hmm. going this way. Yeah. The whole in app purchases are definitely a big thing. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's there because I'll, I'll just do that, save that. It's cool. So, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I, it's, yeah. We, we've talked about, I, I can't remember whose book it was or we, we've we talked about barrier barriers to kind of purchase right way before, way loads of times. This is a very different bit, uh, fitness podcast, isn't it? Um, but in terms of what is your barrier to fucking signing up with someone or like how many things, because I'm assuming you and Mike have talked about it pr like plenty is like how how big like stuff is in your link tree, for example, or whether you should just yeah. have one link or whether like the, the addition of choice. And it's like, you have that choice mm -hmm. to go to Patreon, but you're like, I don't want to, if it was there and it was less of a choice yeah. in theory, that's less actions or less walls. Like Amazon are perfect. They, I'm, I'm assuming as soon, as soon as they brought in one click to purchase, like that buy now, mm -hmm. and you literally don't have to do anything. You just click it because you're already logged in, you're already through and it just goes, I reckon that mm -hmm. they went, Massive spike in revenue, I reckon. Mm. Just because, and we we all do it, don't they? We like the fact of like, I I can't bother. To, I've got to enter my card details. Why has that not got Apple Pay? Yeah. Why has that not got there? That's why. Like literally, I've had a go at some physios. Like I was talking about. Like I was like, why the fuck am I paying you to your bank account? I was like, where mm. is your Stripe? I was like, why can I not do sort of an Apple Pay? Pay you? It's like obviously to us, Apple Pay. Pay off you go. I don't need anything. Yeah. It's a massive thing is like, and, and people call it, you can call it upsells and cross sells, whatever it is. But I think mm. this is more a case of like, again, thinking about user behavior and user psychology. Like I would, so again, it doesn't even come down to money. Again, when you think about, 
So, like, if they had the option on Apple Podcast to subscribe to, to Chatbix for seven pound, I'd have done it already. Yeah. I can do it for three quid on Patreon, but I've not done it. I just, I just could, I just thought to myself, it's, it's just wild. It's, it's, it's crazy that that's the thing. So again, I've been, I've been, I've been doing a lot of like fantasy football, watching YouTube videos. They're very good at it. They all have like an extra fantasy football hub, and there's this another website, right? I think. I'm gonna. I'm moving my camera, guys. I'm moving it. To say it's annoyed. It's annoyed me and, to hell. And they all have. And they all have like these options to join the to join to subscribe to their YouTube channels and have a paid thing where they have a few more extra videos and all this sort of stuff. And I'm much more inclined to do that than I am to join their other website because I'm like, well, they don't go on your website normally. It's like it's not part of my day. I just yeah. thought it was it was it was a fascinating insight into like how I use Instagram. And anyway, the point of the email I was talking about was well was like. How many of these five second videos do you watch with loops on? How many of them do you actually like? Like, how many of them can you get used to seeing and get a bit fucking fed up? How many do you actually watch all the way through and never hit like or comment? How many times do you engage with something like in terms of like watching it and, and liking it, but never actually take it any further than that? How long do you have to follow someone before buying from them? And it was like answering all these questions for people. And I was like, that's when you realize that you can be making great content, but someone won't buy from you for three, four months. And that that's normal. I think people think that's yeah. abnormal. I'm like, no, no, it's normal. Think about when you yeah. followed me or you listened to this podcast. You didn't straight away go, I'm gonna sort, I'm gonna reach out to these guys. It takes ages. And I think too many coaches forget about the human side of that and like how they use it. And they assume mm. that their audience aren't exactly the same as them. It's like, no, they're pretty much the same. Um, so I just thought it was a fascinating insight. And I think a lot of coaches could learn from that and go, okay, how do I use this? How do I use Instagram? How do I use podcasts? When do I listen to them? Should I do a podcast? What do my podcasts talk about? What are the interesting bits that I like? What bits do I come back for? What bits do I not like? And I just think that's fascinating when you break it down. I think it would open a lot of coaches' eyes in terms of like free a free audit on what you should or shouldn't be posting. I think that's always a good place to kind of to kind of look at, in my in my opinion. Anyway. Good. Good, Daniel. Can you have an opinion on the still shocking state of uh, running triathlon ultra S&C? Um, oh, I don't think. Now. I don't think what they're supposed to do, mate. Just a few car phrases. Oh, you, you, you're, you're, you're seeing like the extent of it and you're fucking rehabbing for your knee, mate. That's probably, that's about as much as you. Yeah, can... bit of banded work, is it? Bit of glue band, banded? Band, do, do lots of bands. Like, I, I was, I did a, I wrote an email. Actually, it was so, it annoyed me so much that I had to change my email. Um, that I normally every Wednesday um, write an email. Shot. Sure. Um, that gives kudos to uh, something I think is good um, and like is pretty cool. And I explain the nuts and bolts of it. Like, so what did they do last week? Like some like depth drop kind of depth jump kind of thing mm. um, and how it improves like 5k times. Um, I had to save a stupid one. Where is it? I didn't put it in the stupid. Um but essentially it was like the five best um, things that you can do as a runner from a physio. And I was like, for fuck's sake, all right, what is this going to be talking about? And like our five best, where is it? Where is it? I should just get my email up really, shouldn't I? Be quicker. Probably be quicker. I've definitely saved it, obviously. Just got to find it in my saves. Unfortunately, I also need to know, by the way, if anyone has taken our recommendation to listen to Chat Bix and actually enjoys it. It's <laughs> it, I, and, and I and trust me when I talk about like understanding why I like certain things, why I do, I'm still trying to figure it out, <laughs> like why I keep listening to that. Is there's something weirdly comforting about that program? Um, yeah, but he did a recent one where he's moving to Bath. David Earl's looking at houses around Bath. Yeah, I haven't listened to it today. It's going to be a, I, I might listen to it on my run. It's it's but, weird listening to that when I know when I know that I, again well, I've got a house there and, and live there and stuff like that. It's um, it's funny listening to him describe how amazing it is. He loves it. He like loves it. And I'm like, oh, it's all right. But then it's funny how when you live there, you forget that it's so nice. Yeah, that's the thing I find fascinating with it. All right, I'm in my win. I'm in my my Wednesday email. 
You got it, mate. Come on. Come on. Fucking, I got to go in my campaign. There we go. We found it. No, we haven't. That's the wrong one. This is literally what chat books is like, by the way. So if you can yeah, uh, bear with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we texted each other as well. And, you know, Hello. There we go. I said, welcome to the dark side. Um, fuck me. I didn't do a link to it, Daniel. You didn't? I didn't. I didn't do a, a link to it. I know it was done on... Well, basically, it was done by Runner, which is a very popular app. Um which I get, I've also commented on their stuff many a time, but they've never taken me up on my offer of like, I'll write some stuff for you guys. Would you like the, for this to be better? Yeah. There we go. The five top strength movements you need to be doing from Steph Davies, who was a Olympian or some sort. And it was thus, um, it annoys me. Prerequisite of being a good coach is not, you must have been a professional athlete in that sport. Very yeah. commonly, they're shit at coaching and don't yeah. understand what's happening. So these are the five top strength movements you need to be doing as a runner. Okay. Um, what we got? Number one. Annoyingly, it's in a it's in an annoying reel. No. Number one, hip thrusts. Number one exercise, hip thrusts. Wouldn't I? I wrote. I was like, it wouldn't crack my top fifty, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Number two, single leg calf raises, classic, classic. Every single running coach will give you a calf raise. Did you know that the soleus takes more load whilst you run? Um, so maybe we need to do knee bent ones um, as you go around. So mm -hmm. why, why would you not know that? Um, also, it's loaded to fucking nothing. Um, yeah. But obviously, strength is relative, but. Yeah. It's not like you might do a lot of contacts when you run. No. Would you? No, no, no foot contacts at all there. Um, the, extra, the extra 10 reps body weight will be, will be <laughs> make a huge Probably difference. Just take us through the roof. Um, then number three, a straight leg deadlift. But the video is of an RDL. Of course it is. Why yeah, would you not do that? <laughs> Everybody. Uh, number four, a weighted plank. What? Why is that going useful? <laughs> Why is that? There? I was like, that won't, that wouldn't, that's like scraping that absolute barrel. And then uh, number five, stir the pot with the old Swiss ball. So the only Not one in... that really, so the only one they really need is an RDL then, basically. That's basically what I'm saying. I, I was like, literally, I was like, load the fucking calf raises up. Uh, make that an RDL, not a stiff leg deadlift, and do it fucking heavy. Um, <laughs> not sure the other three would even scratch the surface of being anywhere near my top 50 exercises for runners. Um, yeah. The stir of the pot exercise, I actually quite like. I was like, that's fine, but I wouldn't, I'm not saying it's yeah, a necessity. So what would I've, they be then, Tom? Come on. I've not like programmed it in fucking, I don't know what I wrote actually. Did I do one? No, I did a verdict. Um, I just called it a nope, yes, nope, yes. Um, I'd imagine once, Bulgarian split squats need to be in there somewhere. Uh, no, give or take, but you do a heel raise. So yeah, I, I just any any sort of split squat or leg press doesn't really matter. Fucking just do it um, in a heel raise, just so you get striking force. Floating heel, float the old floating heel. Um, yeah, believe it or not, that will spark up a lot of foot mechanics. Guess what? You use your feet quite a lot. Um, so training the musculature in there is pretty vital. Um, RDLs, fine, absolutely fine. I still rather use butt squat, or like shockingly, I'd rather use back squat just to push push yourself through dorsiflexion because dorsiflexion is naturally and massively correlated with people who are faster, hugely. Mm -hmm. Um, people, the ability to dorsiflex is big. Um, anyway, um, probably some hip flexor work, loaded hip flexors, some sort of thing. That'd be all right. Um, I'd probably want some skips, some bounds, some carries, some depth drops, that kind of thing. My knee's getting very high. Um, all those kind of things would be necessity. Um, and then probably, why not just do some pull-ups and some bench pressing as a combination? I don't Ooh, see why not. Money. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, yeah, but just, meh, just don't understand. Don't understand why it's just always really high reps. It's always super underloaded. It's always weirdly kind of planned out. Um, 
not paired together correctly, not in the like the order that we might want to. Um, yeah, it's all very odd, all very odd. Hence why I've given away a fucking free fire faster in the gym plan all month. Um, yeah, but it's still annoying me, and it will continue to be my uh, my bugbear now that I've entered the world of triathlons and yeah, all this kind of stuff and running because yeah, it's crazy. It is slightly crazy. That I think it you see the same with like up. you see the same with football SNC and stuff, don't you? Do you know what I mean? You just just people just don't know, and they just go, "Oh yeah, we did this," and like yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Well, does it? Does it though? Like it's. I think you see it a lot. Just any sport yeah. like that. Like I saw someone in the gym the other day. Again, like this poor young lad, obviously had hired a you know a PT in there, and and she was, and, and they were doing some exercises. And then he was doing like a bowling action in cricket, and he's like, yeah, you do it like this, and in front of this. So then, of course, she was just going arm oh, down like this. Okay, cool, I get it. And then, of course, just gave him a cable to hold on to, and then just went like that. And it's like, no, like there's so much more to like the legs and the the the, the landing and the position and the the you know the the force transfer transfer from the foot up the hips to the upper body to rotate and move and I was like oh my god you know it's like oh so the funny arm um, uh, it's like the same with football isn't it it's like touch the cable to this kick yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest one I've ever seen in the gym was uh I believe the coach was training a polo player <laughs> <laughs> I mean so they, brought, so they brought a horse in they brought a horse in <laughs> <laughs> they brought, they brought, they brought, <laughs> Of course, they had a cable. They did that. So they they put like uh, almost like a bench on top of a like a plyo box or like a, on a ball or something. I like, got them to sit on that, then cable, and was just doing like a swing. Fuck <laughs> with the cable. I was like, of course. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we do that? Yeah, I I literally saw that in a gym. I was like, it doesn't surprise me though. To be fair, like, it doesn't one. shock me at all. Like. It's inventive. It's thinking outside the box. It's what we want. We want creatives. Just mind going. We would never know whether it was shit or not. We could use our kind of process well, of... Well, like, we, we do know. That, but yeah. <laughs> rationality. But yeah, very odd. Um, but obviously, the, yeah, the whole... The the world of uh, running SNC needs a little bit of an uplift. So, which is, yeah, just, just needs it. I think it's also like not knowing where like you were just talking about like your knee rehab right and i'm assuming i hate to assume because obviously it makes a um but your physio might not be probably not be a kind of well kind of read on like introducing plyometrics and obviously he's probably good on tendon health but introducing some sort of tendon health within weightlifting or gym based or that kind of setting to bring mm. that back up to speed, which is a lot in turn. It's a little bit further down the scope, but is in the same realm of like running plyometrics and stuff. But they seem to have missed out this jargon in the middle of like, we're not going to bother heavy strength training, which mm. I've got massive correlation for all my athletes that do really heavy strength training. Touch wood. Don't get injured when they train like or when they run. They just get nothing. And it's like, yeah. And they're just way more resilient. You don't get these little niggles as you go yeah. through. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that I've seen of a lot of people. And they're just generally weak. Uh, like mm -hmm. They should be able to do pull-ups. They should be able to do a body weight, like back, back squat or something like that. Um, they should be able to do these kind of normal strength, what I would deem as a normal strength marker. Um, yeah. But, yeah. No bueno. No bueno, mate. Not oh, good cool. me, is it? But it's 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 also mm. that it doesn't sell. Like runners don't no. want to hear lift heavy, do some hard shit. Oh, I'd rather not. Oh, I'd rather got run club in a minute. That's oh. why they run. But that, but dare I say it? This is going to sound <clears> awful. It's why they run. It's comfortable. Mm. I say comfortable. I wouldn't fucking want to do it. And, 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 <laughs> but it's, it's, it's more a case of that. Right? It's more of that case of it. yeah. Because they're good at it, and they're like, oh, I don't want to go back to something I'm not good at because I spent all yeah. this time getting good at this thing. So it's like, mm, but this. But they also can't see better. the direct correlation. They don't get it. They don't understand. They go, well, low reps, heavy strength training. How's that going to help me? And it's like, you just, just fucking do it. Do you know what I mean? But they don't like. They don't get it. Mm. There's no like. Again, I wrote another email again last week about being logical and how being logical is is actually useless. It's like because you just end up in the same place everyone else ends up. So the logical thing to do when you want to be better at running and be injury free, oh well, 
be a better runner, have better technique. Like fire your glutes up before you go running. Warm up properly. Because that's what everyone else is doing again, injured. Yeah. The it, it's not logical to go do some heavy back squats in the gym. It's not as logical. Like, and I said this about like on, online coaches of Instagram is they just post, they just think people struggle with their fitness, they struggle with their training, they struggle with their diet. I'll just post training tips and diet tips all the time. And that'll really help. And it's like logically, it makes sense. But it's illogical when you reverse engineer it and go, okay, so then so that means that no PT and no one involved in the gym ever would ever eat a bad food in their life. But they do. They order a takeaway. Well, so it's not then that they don't know the high protein air fryer recipes. It's that they can't be fucking asked to make one. Because if it was just down to how much you knew, it would be well, won't be won't be a problem then. No one no one would be fat in that position once you learn that. And it's just again, it's just it was from a Roy Southern book. I I'm fascinated with his work at the moment. He's really interesting in the advertising side of stuff, advertising psychology. And again, it's this whole thing. It's like it's just illogical. So that's why people don't do it with runners. Again, you say to swimmers, you say to people, it just doesn't make sense. If you're a swimmer, it doesn't make sense to do heavy strength training over body because you're like, but I don't do that in the pool. I, I move my arms like this. I can't do that in the gym. So, like, <laughs> but it's this whole specificity thing, isn't it? Footballers used to do it all the time. How's this going to help me? Oh, my yeah. hamstrings are just sore. Yeah. Do you, do you think that if we got better at this, your hamstrings got a little bit less sore over time that they might not break down when they were in the record? The fact that they're sore after doing barbell RDLs probably means that they're very, very weak. Like, mm. if it's illogical, it's, it's like, well, no, because that's hurting them more. So I'm going to stop that now. And it's just crazy, isn't it? Like, that that's what it comes down to. But it is. It is. The specificity thing's annoying as well, because I think that's mm. obviously stemmed from... I saw someone talk about this um, who's producing, like, a level three, like, qualification. And they were talking about specificity. And I think that term really hurts sports-based training, really hurts yeah. it, like athletic-based yeah. training, because people... Golf. Golf's a prime example of that. <laughs> pe people try to do, like, magic shit. And yeah. it's like, hang on a minute. Like, the best people who are the most resilient, who play week in, week out, are the best who are the strongest. And they have the highest vertical jump, they have the biggest broad jump, and they have the biggest back squat relative to their weight or the most clean technique those are the people who will succeed not the ones who do the weirdest fucking movement that is looks most like their sport you know what you should do to get better at your sport play your sport be your a sport. really fucking <laughs> just play it go do your technical drills go do that but leave it out of the gym like the gym work mm -hmm. is to supplement it and to be make you as healthy as possible for you to push yourself on your sport and that's it um which is if running is your sport jogging jogging is your sport um jogging yeah, then supplement it by being like really foundationally strong yeah um because believe it or not like the specificity for running in the gym is not high at all like the things i said was like literally do a heel hover like when you split squat mm. probably it like do shit tons of sled work Cool. And then I'd be like doing lots of isometrics. That's it. Honestly, that is it. And like tapering towards your run. Guess what? The week before your run, only do concentric base loading or isometric loading. That's what all of my guys do. So they peak towards their uh, event. So you shouldn't be doing like any example, like some wads or anything that's got eccentric base loading because that's going to make you sore. That's going to fatigue you. CNS ramps down. Isometric contractions don't tend to do that. And concentric ones certainly don't do that. Hence why you can do sled work and be fresh the next day. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, do those then. Um, but yeah, that's why you need coaching. Um, interesting, isn't it? Though? But yeah, I'll talk about my uh, my triathlon journey. Um, it's all come into a head, mate. That's, obviously, I did my first full Olympic, which Dan was like crying, um, which I did it in... It. Even the thought of it. <laughs> I did it in like two and a half hours. So, which is, which is pretty all right. I think yeah, I did my swim in like 26, something like that, minutes. Um, my bike was like one hour 10 ish, one hour eight, something like that. Mm. And then my run, my 10K run was like a 47, 48, um, 
which was fucking tragic because I had to really go slower on the last like three k because I had awful blister. Did I tell so you? Is that a I full? Send... Is that a full length triathlon? That is what is a triathlon. Yeah, triathlon. Yeah, and then the Ironman the is Olympic. on when you do like the fucking marathon and shit like that at the end. The full Ironman is like yeah, that's one hundred and forty miles you cover. So that's like three point two k swim, a fucking 180k bike and then a marathon on the end so i'm doing when, when are you doing that i'm doing a 2k swim a seven no a 90k bike and a half marathon on the end i'm doing that in 11 days time so 70.3 that'll be fun It'll be fun daniel so i've got all my nutrition i'm pretty much like anything that's happening this week i'm not gonna make any progress it's pretty much don't get injured or don't fuck myself up um let's be honest the work's already been done so um even though my garmin says i'm in fucking recovery mode when i did 115 kilometers on my bike on sunday fucking ridiculous and then did a like a 2k swim yesterday i don't really understand why my garmin's like oh, you fat lazy cunt like why are you doing anything um thanks garmin that's that's what i'm gonna watch that's what it sounds like so yeah yeah with the voice inside my head um so yeah i've Honestly, it's been really, it's been really cool to like, uh, in terms of this process, I, I have enjoyed it. Definitely something to train for is massive. Obviously it's me, number one as a coach, it's let me have content to talk about. It's helped yeah. me kind of, uh, <laughs> talk to other people who also want coaching because of the journeys that I've been doing, um, and being able to put myself in there. And I've been, it's not something when I got set into it. I think everybody would, well, people would have come to this podcast, know that my my realm is in within power-based training and strength-based training, right? And applying mm -hmm. my knowledge and trying to read up around and go and doing that into ultra and stuff like that. And applying what I know into this one is really interesting um, and coaching my way through it. It's been fun. But yeah, it's interesting. I've never, that was obviously two and a half hours. I've never done something like that. I've never done anything for two and a half hours. Um, so that yeah, was me interesting. <laughs> watch a film. <laughs> watch a film, it's about it. I was like, I just put Star Wars on, then I'm fine. Uh, it'd be good. Um, so yeah, this obviously 70.3, I'm aiming for somewhere between five and six hours. So that'd be interesting. Obviously we're oh. recording the week next week, but it'll be the week after. I will be uh, giving you a summation of how wrecked I am. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool journey. If anybody wants to reach out and like talk about um, what they should be doing training wise, then more than happy to. I've been a shock injury free, apart from me being a little child of um, uh, blistering. And also, but I did make an intervention as well. So I actually got a little bit of cramping. Um, I know my nutrition for my Blenheim one was awful because I threw up interesting um but th for this one my nutrition was actually almost spot on but i did get some cramping in my left hamstring when i was at after the swim um which i can only assure i don't think it was a sodium issue which i do struggle with i do struggle with cramping sometimes but mm -hmm. um but i was fine on the bike and absolutely fine on the run it was only post swim so me putting my ssc hat on specificity um, I can only assume it's long lever isometric strength. So I've probably not done enough like long, like hip based hamstring work, like where my like foot's going up and down, not my like torso. So I've just implemented a load of like Borsch holds and flutter kicks into my last two weeks to try and just jump it up in strength a little bit. Was the, was the cramp quite high up? Like near your ass? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So I was like, that's my, my issue. So um, I think it's either that or it's the fact that the it could also be uh, muscle not warm because I'm coming out of a freezing for pissing cold lake and I'm not really used to it. And I haven't, I would be like, yeah, could be that. So mm. I was slightly annoyed, um, but I do tend to get a little bit cramped when I swim in my hamstrings. Yeah, I get so. a bit cramped when I swim as well, so I'm not going to bother doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. I'm like, I'm obviously going to sodium myself up, potassium myself up, all the new electrolytes I can fucking breathe in. Yeah, get um, a banana. You'll be all right. So Banana's good. Just, just have a banana. Oh. Get a banana, mate. <laughs> mate, the thought so, of that honestly just makes me feel ill. So fair play to you for doing it. I don't give you, I don't give you much credit very often, and but I will give it for uh, you for that because that's fucking impressive. So it'll be, it'll be fun. And we'll see on the back end. 
if we get enough, I'll put it up to a vote on Instagram. It's not going to go well, is it? Should I just next year, should I go for a, a full and do a full yes. like well, 140? That's well, that's yeah. happening, isn't it? So, so everyone's going to vote for that. So yeah. <laughs> I'd like Tom to ruin his life. It's great. Yeah, oh, yeah cool. Tom can yeah, get blisters yeah. all over his feet again. Yeah, that'd be great fun. Uh, yeah, about 140 great miles. Fun. So. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that'd be interesting. So I think I feel like it's one of those things. Like because I've done half, I'm like might as well just do it all. Just, well, yeah, just... I, I think I think there's no point just doing a half time. I think it's just a, a half to one up for the full, isn't it? Really. So yeah, it's yeah, like doing nine holes of golf. It's like you can't just yeah, do nine yeah, holes of golf. Do right? You can't see a golfer only done nine holes. You've got to do more. Do you know what I mean? You've got to do more. I'll just be able to like, oh yeah, I've run a marathon. I'm like, jog on, mate. Fuck off. Like, yeah. I had to do that after doing all this shit. So that's fine. I think that's why people. I think that's why people do those Iron Man, Iron Man things. It's just to say they've done it. Like just, just so that if yeah, anyone 100%. says, you know, if they're at a party and someone goes, "Oh yeah, I ran a marathon." Yeah, I did an Iron Man. It's kind of like, yeah. shut up, shut yeah. the so, fuck up. I so this. did I. Yeah. yeah, so did I. But yeah, I did I, fucking just after five a fucking, hours before, yeah. yeah, after the five hour bike ride, warm up to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I did it. Um, yeah, fucking hell, that'll be fun. We'll see. But yeah. I would not get a cringy fucking tattoo, um, which yeah. fucking hell, bro. Yeah, Jesus Christ, too far. Just have the little medal. I've got some little med. I've collected. They're all like nice medals, aren't they? The big ones for the triathlons. You didn't even the place. Just finish it. They should be to be fair. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just finish it. So it's fun. Hello. Um, yeah, all good. All right, we'll bring this to a close. Wonderful. We got any other business? Not from me, no. But everyone's glad we're back. That's the main I'm thing. Sh- I'm, I'm sure. Well, we did, we were we were here last week. We just didn't record, and that's why what's thrown us off. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> we were here. Yeah, it was just like, oh, okay, fine. Um, no, nothing from me. I don't believe. Um, I think a combine, new combine, will start on the twenty second of September. So for a next group, I know I've already got like a bunch of people asking about it in my DMs, scoundrels, but um, the wait list will not open until the 9th of September. So there'll be a two week wait list. Um, you guys have already done your blitz stuff. You don't even deal with it anymore. You're so big time. So, so big time now. Don't deal with um, it anymore, mate. Uh, yeah, fucking out. Jake, but, smash it out of the park. Um, yeah, you've got a two week wait list from the 9th. So set your calendars. Um, you can do it from then. Lovely. Yeah, if, you to, if you want to work with me, you, you can join my wait list, but it's 2025 when, when it's taken. 2025. Yeah. yeah just like get in touch if you, if you need help. <laughs> um, fucking crazy. I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't bother. I, I speak to you every week. I should be getting, you should charge me, shouldn't you? Fucking hell. <laughs> actually. Fucking hell. I'm yeah. going to give you rehab advice. Like, yeah. Yeah. Switch it back around. Like, you joke, like you joke, but in two weeks might be coming back to you anyway. And for some fucking rehab advice. <laughs> so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm just, I'm gonna say it's just the first week, and he just wants to see where I'm at. I get it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. But next week, if I'm not doing something that's a little bit more advanced, I'm not. What? Well, I'm not. <laughs> put it this way, I'm not putting that band on again for another fucking twenty. Shock to the world. Physio underloads client. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With previous training history. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're all good. Right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you next week. See you later.